delve into the newspapers with our guests, but you know how uh, we do it here on uh, the AM show. Now, joining us for this conversation, we have Dr. Ikia Amwakon. Uh, she is a communications team member of the MPP. Uh, she joins uh, the conversation. She's right here in the studio, and we'll have Sweetie Abochi. Abochi, introduce the other guest. Doc, good morning. Good morning. Is this your first time here? Yes, and good morning to all your lovely viewers. Okay, so I, I guess it's going to be a baptism of fire. <laughs> Some, some, one of your colleagues learned a few days ago. So really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it's going to be fun, but it's going to be, you know. Oh, I'm confident. When you have the truth on your side, nothing is difficult. The truth. Okay. What's truth? Truth in all matters. Truth in? In all matters. Uh, yeah. You know, it reminds me of the Bible and when <laughs> the question will be posed, what is truth? And the answer that was given, but we'll go there later. <laughs> right, you. um, your counterpart <laughs> from the other side, Shamima Muslim, is also part of the NDC communications mm -hmm. team, and she joins us via Zoom. Good morning, Shamima. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's great Apologies to you. Apologies that I'm not able to join you in studio. It's okay. We would make the best out of what we can, um, what we have. So let's start with you since you're um, joining us via Zoom to take us through what's on your mind this morning and then we'll come back to the studio. You have a minute or two to uh, take us through that. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Sweetie. I think what's on my mind, as many as on the mind of many Ghanaians, is the simple question of whether or not we will be able to um, have a credible elections this year and whether we would have a credible voter register this year and whether the voice of reason will reign paramount and the people who have been vested with, with the sacred duty of running in our elections, which is the Electoral Commission, will do right by the people of Ghana and be open to the request for an audit. So we go into a crucial election where we are all confident that at least the basic document with which we are entering the election with is not perfect, but it is reasonably good enough. Because the infractions we have seen and we have witnessed this time, we have never witnessed those infractions before. It is worrying if there are reports, which reports are not contested by the Electoral Commission. Yesterday, I heard the New Patriotic Party say that if the Electoral Commission uh, quizzes to the request for a forensic audit, they are also going to go in a demo demonstration. I mean, it is so unfortunate right. that mm -hmm. the NPP would say this because the NPP in the past have also had issues with the voters register on the specific matter of bloating of the register. We are talking here about an illegality involving illegal transfer of people's votes to places where they are not mm -hmm. supposed to be. And people said, oh, is it not the case of Pusiga? Okay, if about Shamima, la land on this point names. for me so we start the conversation. I'll well, come back. Uh, well, my, my call is that we need more voices speaking up and against the position the Electoral Commission seems to be taking. And we need those voices to speak today because this country is all we have. Okay. Nobody wants to lead in a chaotic situation. We Thank want so a much. peaceful country. Mm -hmm. We want peaceful elections. We want fair elections. That is all we are asking for. All right. Thank you, Shamima. So, Dr. Makwa, usually our guests get a minute or two to walk us through um, any topical issue or whatever it's on top of their minds before we get into the newspapers. That was Shamima Muslim. What would be your take? Yeah, regards to her this morning. And since she's already started on the issue of the voters register, I think it's only fair that I also have my two cents on that topic. <laughs> the double standard and the behavior coming out of the NDC of recent, it's, I, don't, I can't even find a civil word to use. I, I find it completely laughable because we've been in this country before, even if we were not particularly alive at the beginning. We've, there's a lot of written history, so we know what happened. In, after the PNDC at that time took over this country by force, if we all remember, I think the problem is a lot of people do not even remember that. It took over this country by force. 
1992, when they decided to return us to uh, democratic rule, the AC at that time, was then appointed by the, the then President Rollins? Did he not appoint everybody? Did he not appoint all the Supreme Court judges? In 96, wasn't it the same? So, I mean, for you to come and try and bastardize the situation just because you feel like you're on the verge of losing and you're unable to articulate any policies, there's no clear direction coming out from the side of the NDC. It's very, very obvious that all they are trying to do is more diversionary ta tactics. Since this um, campaign started, all they've done is to, to do the politics of distractions, what we like to call cheap communist tactics. I mean, what, what's the issue here? She mentioned Pusiga. If the issue, you have concrete problems, you have legitimate issues, bring it out and let's um, rectify it. And I, don't, I can't even sit here and, and pretend to speak for the Electoral Commission. I don't. I speak for the New Patriotic Party. And we, are all, we all have a vested interest to make sure that the voters uh, register is credible. Right. There's no attempt by the MPP on any grounds at all to do anything on toward in this election. We know we have a superior message, and so there's no need to engage in all of this. We want to win these elections free and fair, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay. So if, in typical fashion, you feel like you're losing and all you can do is throw stones at the referee, I, I mean, I would urge my brothers and sisters on the side of the NDC to, to engage in more constructive arguments. You know, let's, let's just discuss issues and what they have for the people of Ghana and not... Before we get into the papers, I know Ben wants to... Uh, definitely, yeah, I do. Um, I'll, I'll, for both Shamima and uh, Dr. Amwako. Shamima, are you saying that if we went to the polls today with uh, the register we had, that would mean that you would have little to no confidence in that register or that, yeah, that voters' register being used for election 2024? Is that what you're saying? Um, thank you very much. My brother... Please, please just be very yeah, brief. I want, I want very brief remarks on this because you've already spoken. I just want a clear answer on that. With the, with the infractions that we have today, we cannot wait, to dis, uh, wait till December 7th to disenfranchise thousands. How, 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 how will that happen? That would happen because if you go to your polling station and you do not find that your name is on the register, look, my brother, one Ghanaian disenfranchised is one Ghanaian too many. We have a cell on our hands. Under this same electoral commission, that has not happened before. An entire constituency was disenfranchised for four years. They have no representation in parliament. Shamima, please, 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 please not, address, please hit the nail not. on the head. Address the question I'm asking. I'm saying that. That is the question if, I'm asking. Let's I'm not bring in Sal. I, I get the point. must not engage in this. Who said, she said, you are the media. You have seen some of the, uh, the evidence we have provided. What is your personal position uh, on those my, my personal My personal position is not what I am asking. Shamima, I'm asking, what is your party's position? If the register my remains like this, do you accept it or not? We require, and I have said it, I said my party's position is that we require an audit to correct these infractions that the, uh, the EC itself does not deny we say that let us all come around the table, every stakeholder. Let us vet and, and, um, and, and, and what do you call it? Let, let us um, investigate and audit the register. You said you have okay. corrected all some right. of those infractions. Okay. And I'm saying that we should not go into an election with such major infractions that has the potential of disenfranchising Ghana. Shamima, so Why I, I, I asked to do that. I pose that question because while you want this audit, and yesterday there was that uh, treatise, if you like, thesis provided by the MPP in that engagement. Very long document on why they feel. It's interesting with these political parties, both of you, MPP and NDC. But my, the reason I'm that. asking, the reason I am asking this question is, you say you want this audit. And I'm asking, if you don't get the audit, what next? Because you have evidence as per your party's claims. You don't want to give the further evidence to the EC, but you will only give it to this external forensic auditing institution, which is why I am asking that question, because then it means that if the EC decides not to go along with this, your evidence or the information you have, what, what happens to it? You don't want to give it to the EC. Some have said, Kodeo has said, go back to IPAC 
and, and force home your issues there. That was why I was asking uh, that question. But anyway, let me come in, into the studio as well. And uh, Dr. Mwako? Yes. You said something interesting. Are you a lawyer? No. You're not? No. You said something about the appointment of judges, was it in 1992? <laughs> and you said it, it, it was what, um, he, he single-handedly appointed... Wasn't the president the one with the responsibility to appoint Supreme Court judges? Isn't that enshrined in our constitution? Well, that's exactly my point. You made a point suggesting that he, he engaged in some sort of illegality? No, I don't. I think you were misconstrued. I didn't say I misunderstood that. you. Yes, I said okay. at that point he appointed everyone. So why are we trying to behave like because the EC chairperson has been appointed by this government, she ha lacks credibility, when that is the norm? But who has said that? Oh, that's what the people on the, my brothers and sisters on the NDC side have said. They've said that she's a stooge of the MPP. They've said that she's an uh, operative of the MPP. They've done everything to attack her credibility. So, yes. Did you hear same said by your party members about Charlotte Tosse? Did you hear that? Or no, maybe at they, that they time? Don't hear. No, 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 Shamima, let, let me do this. For both of you, I, I want to do the grilling. Let me do the barbecue. <laughs> I'm the one. Barbecue. Did you hear that? Or maybe at that time you weren't following, you know. Of New course I was following, and I, I think at that time, concerns were raised, mm. and we did the best we, can, we could at the time to be able to come to a democratic solution, which is what I expect the NDC to do now. Hitting the streets, and, and I mean, I've seen some very inflammatory statements coming from top leaders in the NDC, and I think that is not going to help our democracy at this point. The last thing I'll say on this, of course, I had that recent interaction with Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, and mm -hmm. you know, a stalwart of your party, and he said that, he asks, why should the EC be afraid if it has nothing to hide? I've heard Nana uh, talk about, oh, if the EC goes ahead with this audit, we'll hit the streets. That, that smacks for me. You see, it feeds into the rhetoric of, oh, the EC is in bed with the MPP, or the MPP is in bed with the EC. Okay. When in 2016, mm -hmm. a similar audit was called for. Mm -hmm. Did the NDC demonstrate, hit the streets to prevent, you know, that audit that was called for. And did the audit happen or not? It did happen. It was on the back of that that Nanado Dankwe Kufuado became president. So if you talk of hypocrisy, how about we start from your doorstep? Okay, so in 2016, yes, an audit was had, but was it by a foreign... Uh, Whichever way, there was an audit. Yes, and then we were able to prove the reasons why we needed an audit. We asked mm. you just try to ask... But um, now the NDC has not proved no, anything. No, yeah, so bring out the evidence. If you actually have... See, Pussy this, guy is part this, of the evidence. We can talk about the Pussy guy the issue. The voters who's, who have been transferred so, yeah, without their knowledge. Please let me learn. We can talk the about evidence. this Pussy guy issue because mm. um, as far as I am informed, because as I said, I don't speak for the Electoral Commission. Right. They are separate entity. In Pusiga, someone took um, ID cards, um, voters' IDs from about 30 people, if I'm not wrong, between 20 and 30 people, and then transferred um, the votes from Tamale and then Savnerlugu. I don't want to get the pronunciation wrong. Isn't that correct? Savnerlugu, yes. Yes. So that's what happened. Votes, a, a, an independent person, a civilian, took voters' ID cards from people under the guise of doing something else. I, I, I don't really want to go into the specifics of that. And then went into the system to um, transfer the votes. These three constituencies involved are NDC strongholds. Mm. So, I mean, let me, what's the point of that exercise? Are you asking yourself why it's even possible for uh, someone working with the EC to be able to do Yes, this? and so now that, and I think this Pusiga issue was, um, um, it came out after the, the EC's own uh, audits, isn't it? They had an audit, their own audits, and they were able to find this issue. Actually, no. It was the NDC that pointed out and these then they, to them. They then went. the Electoral Commission went. What is interesting for me, it would have been curious as well. Mm -hmm. I don't care about you political parties, NDC, MPP, but I would have been curious. If I told you that, look, I've identified at least 38 of these, mm -hmm. and then you also go and conduct your findings, and later, you, you don't even get back to me. I have to get back to you, and you tell me, oh, the 38 were the only ones that were involved. Would you be convinced by that? I can see how you, you could have some skepticism. What's my point in this issue is what does, anyway, I mean. That's, that's my final bit. <laughs> so so let me land because. No, 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 I, I want you to land. I'm just alerting yeah, okay, you. Yeah, so, so let me land on this issue. I find it very curious. If um, what now, what the NDC is trying to say is that the AC is in bed with the MPP. So what do we stand to gain by transferring 38 votes between three NDC strongholds? To me, it doesn't make any sense than to bring the credibility of the voters' register. I, I wouldn't have said anything, but do you know what voter transfers, even in the delineation of districts, do you know what voter transfers? You say 38, right? Mm -hmm. 
Imagine 38 across all the districts of Ghana. Use that number. Yes, that's. I'm and, not talking about. So the point I'm trying what to could make happen is depending not on in the where voters' transfer. Are. I'm just saying that if it. Let's you know. Let's 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 think a little. If it was engineered, because I mean, obviously, this would be very difficult for the MPP to engineer in three NDC strongholds. If it was engineered, what would the motive of that be? To bring the the integrity of the register into disrepute. Mm. So to me, I mean, if this is what you've found, I'll bring the, all the other things. That's the point of the voters' exhibition, isn't it? The final register is not out. So if you have any other problem, that's why we exhibit the register. Everybody go and check if your name is there. So that the problems can be sorted out. But if that has not even finished and you want to call for an audit, when some of the issues that are coming back are even suspicious at best, I mean, that's what it calls into question. What I, do you I, need I, the external audit? I promise audit? after, after right. this last statement, it. sweetie, I promise <laughs> after this last statement, uh -huh. I'll not talk about this. Mm. Again, since you want us to think a little, mm -hmm. right, Dr. Amwako? Mm -hmm. Since you want us to think a little, this is a let's very think. Good let's let's think, think into it. Let's conduct some mental gymnastics. Okay. Yeah. If the EC goes ahead, and you see, it's interesting when you listen, for example, and that is why I find it a bit difficult to swallow. Mm -hmm. In 2015, heading to the 2016 elections, Jean Mensa, mm -hmm. now Electoral Commission Chair. I, I could go back later and find the specific document, spoke passionately about why there was the need for an audit then. She said the EC had to be, under Charlotte Osei, had to be proactive, and that in fact, it didn't matter the cost, that the cost, how precious our democracy is, is such that we can't afford to sacrifice any of that, and that if an audit then, as IEA boss, if an audit, no matter the form, no matter the cost, is what it would take to give some credibility to our elections, we should go ahead. Do you think things have fundamentally changed, even if you look at the crucial nature of this election? Do you think that has changed? And even if, supposedly, you felt the EC was completely in the right, mm -hmm. and you and the MPP, you are completely in the right in supporting the EC, do you think even if for the sake of optics, mm -hmm. for the people to feel reassured that we're going into this election and my vote will count, do you feel it makes sense, since we are putting on our thinking caps, mm -hmm. for us to still go ahead with an audit and let bygones be bygones? Do you think it makes sense? So yeah, um, as I started earlier, I cannot make decisions for the EC. I don't speak for no, them. I'm not asking yeah, for but I, I'm I asking what your opinion is. What my opinion on the issue is, obviously, the goal of the electoral exercise is for people to believe in it. That, that's a big factor in all of this. Right. People have to believe that their votes count. Right. They, they have to believe that the system is credible. And I believe strongly in that, that that should be adhered to. Mm -hmm. So whatever measures that need to be put in place to ensure that that credibility is, is safeguarded is, is what's important. So if the EC want to take things step by step and they want to exhibit the register and address concerns as and when it comes, I think that's also another way of going about it. Right. Because because what I find curious, as I said earlier, is why the need, why are they, why are they so desperate for this audit without providing us with the evidence? Well, if I start with well, evidence, it will be. Uh, Suti so let's, let's get into, let's get into the papers. But you know, while, while, all the, um, while the conversation was going on, I tried to find stories that were more bread and butter issues in the newspaper. And it appears, I think it's the season is ripe for all these, but... Everything in this newspaper today is about politics. And I was just trying to move away for a little bit from the politics, but this is where we are. And sometimes I wonder if the NPP were the ones in opposition, they wouldn't be doing the exact same thing. But let's get into the newspaper. I'll start with the Daily Graphic. On the front page, Nana Kwame Bediako starts 276 tour nationwide. EC won't compromise elections, according to Jean Mensam. YEA creates 700,000 jobs in seven years. That's according to the CEO. And 80 days, it's less than 80 days, but the paper says 80 days to general election, NPP and DC battle ready for Medina seat. Let me start with EC not compromising elections, and that's the only story I'm going to do in politics or in the build up to the December 7th elections, and we get into some bread and butter issues. So the EC, will not compromise its core principles of transparency and integrity in the electoral process, 
preceding the December 7 post, the chairperson, Jean Mensa, has said in a short, she said the election management body was preoccupied with ensuring that the watertight systems it had put in place culminated in free, fair, and credible elections to consolidate the country's democratic journey. I want to put a pin in that. Let's hold on a bit and get into this story about secondhand clothing ban detrimental. So the OR Foundation, a non-for-profit organization based in Accra, and the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, that's the AMA, have called for a balanced systemic solution to global textile waste crisis, opposing the idea of a complete ban on second-hand clothing imports. The two organizations in a joint press release issued yesterday advocated a justice-led circular economy that tackled the root cause of the crisis, overproduction, while prioritizing the well-being of communities, particularly those reliant on Kantamatu Market, one of the largest second-hand clothing hubs in the world. And I will skip to the part where it says, both organizations argued that an outright ban on second-hand clothing imports would be detrimental, threatening the livelihoods of thousands of Ghanaians without addressing the issue. So it's like two sides of the coin. First, you're looking at the waste, and then we're looking at businesses collapsing because a lot of people live and depend on this. And then there's a story about, um, I think yesterday in court, the case for the O'Reilly Senior High School, uh, should I call it a murder? Mm -hmm. That case where a student lost his life was in court yesterday. And the age I of think the we can person, just refer to it as a killing for now. A killing, mm -hmm. yeah, not a murder. Mm -hmm. um, the, the age of the person, the accused, has come under yeah. contention, whether he's it's, 18 it's shifted. or 24. Yeah. And the judge is saying that she will not wait any longer. So as of today, <clears throat> Friday, they've ordered that a medical examination be done to ascertain the age of this guy so he can be prosecuted. You know, that thing Why is, are we shifting is really interesting. If you remember <clears throat> that latest um, shooting spree, I'm of was it uh, was it a fourteen year old boy in the U.S. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. you realize he's being treated as an adult. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, in one of the the very interesting, I follow these his things. Father so, um, also, <laughs> his father is also. His father is being roped in because his father got him the gun, knowing that he had certain tendencies, mm -hmm. and this wouldn't be the first time. So, it's it's a bit uh, tricky for me. But of course, the jurisdictions, the legal jurisdictions, are different, mm -hmm. and what applies in one jurisdiction may not necessarily apply in the next but really but, sad yeah. you don't want to start seeing these killings in schools and yeah. i mean we obviously shouldn't make it something that is normal right so just these two stories for your quick reflections because everything here is about ndc and pb and <laughs> today i don't think i want to do that let me start from shamima shamima your quick reflections on the ban of second on second hand clothing and um the issue of the O'Reilly Senior High School killing, the age of the accused in contention, whether he's 24 or 18, which is actually stalling court proceedings. Right, thank you very much. Did you, did you say you don't want to do politics? We are in a political... No, no, I know, but it's okay. We started, we started there, but let's, let's, end it. let's end it with let, bread let, and let, butter let me, issues. Let me just, no, in fact, the politics is the bread and butter issue. If there is no peace in this country, you and I will not even have a television to sit and have a conversation. I know, what I mean is if that when no we take peace, the issue... Shall we hold on a if second? If chaos, I'm going to address your issues. If there is chaos in this country, mm. there will be no country to lead. And there will be no bread and butter even. Look at what happens in what So let's speak countries. to the issues without Canada the politics is what of is it. The, no, well, I don't know what you mean by we're speaking. So as far as I am concerned, I am raising very germane issues that would keep this country intact. This um, second-hand clothing matter that you're talking about, if our politics, if the president who said he was going to move Ghana from a Gadisberg economy into an um, export-led economy and a self-sufficient economy, where industrialization is our base, where we are producing and using our primary products and our primary services. If he was able to achieve that goal, we would now be sowing a lot of local dresses for people and attires and apparels. We would have a booming clothing industry, a booming fashion industry, a booming fabrics industry, local fabrics, uh, Kente, the northern uh, Fugu fabric, 
which is now being used to create so many different things. Tie and dye, batik, made in Ghana. Made in Ghana uh, um, uh, fabrics that we can use to, people can sew ready to wear outfits and, 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 and wear them with dignity. We will not go and be importing second hand. Shamima, the story is about a global textile waste crisis, right? Mm -hmm. And this foundation and AMA is saying that maybe we should put a ban on the imports and recirculation of second hand clothing. And they're saying that about um, 30,000 people work or work in Cantamanto markets doing the exact same thing. So whether or not we should ban it, how do we address it? I understand That's what you're what saying. I'm yes, to you. and I understand you what you're saying. But, but, but Shamima, 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 how are you addressing? I mean, I, I get the fact that this is a problem. I think was Will it you was it. Allow me to just make my point. Shamima, please. you've spoken quite extensively. The point Not probably has been made. Let let me make this point before you make your final point. I, sometime last year, I led this uh, team of Spaniards to Agbogulushi. They were talking about some of these things, including pollution and then this waste. Yes. Rwanda has yes. had its own policies on, you know, used clothing and all of that. It is country specific. You look at what works for you. But you just said something about, you know, the harshness of the economy and, and some other things. And that is why we... How, how does that really relate to... Uh, this bit, whether we ban or don't Benji, ban used clothing. Benji, there is no demand, with, there is no supply without demand. I'm saying to you that when you go to Cantamanto, I, I was trying to let you know that I've done work on this second-hand clothing matter. Uh, and it is not just clothing, it is everything. It is every usable thing. It is clothing, it is um, equipment, it is bare feet. It is mattresses. It is televisions. Ghana and many African countries are dumping grants for these second-hand items. And they are, there is a huge market for them because they are largely more affordable in comparison to okay. uh, ready-made attire or right. um, uh, fabrics. This is what I'm saying. It is a foundational issue where economies are unable to provide cheap clothing which is also dignified for okay. their people right the import of second-hand clothing is like go, go, go send your reporter to Cantamanto and go and talk to them about banning this the Bronuawo Association will come up in arms against you Shabima, I think the point the, 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 the point it, is it, made it, let's it, get into it, other it stories it in the daily of, graphic and then oh. we'll move to we'll move to other um, stories no, let's get um, Dr. Mark. Are you done with the daily graphic? Yes, yes. Okay, let's, let's let's, let's okay so I, I would have wished I'd, I wouldn't have to respond to what my co panelists said, but it's important that I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. I think it's very dangerous the posturing that's coming out of the NDC. I mean, there's no, we, we, nobody's interested in wars. There's no, not going to be any chaos if you don't fool that fire people on the NDC. Let me sit here and tell you. Let's just stick to issues. Nobody wants to fight. Nobody is interested in chaos. That's, that's not what we are about. And the posturing that's coming from their side of late, for me, I find it a little scary. It's not necessary. How is the uh, general, uh, now the chairman of the NDC, on, seen on video, I don't know if you've seen that video going around, doing the sign of like a decapitation kind of thing uh, on this EC matter. Nobody wants to die over this. So let's Are you stop. referring to a picture or you're referring it's a video, to comments uh, no. at the video, at the, he was the latest demonstration. On, uh, the video on his way to the, the demonstration. I, I found that very, like, what's, what are we descending into? If you have a, a genuine issue, let's talk about it. It's dialogue. You, uh, there's this saying that I, I, I find that might be a little inflammatory, but you know, pe thinking people should but not. I don't think that that's fair because we've heard mm -hmm. even the president mm -hmm. make statements like, that, to borrow your words, are scary. Like, you know? Did like you see the president? Hand over power to the NDC. He has come back did to say. Hear, did you hear all that? Yes. 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 Did you hear all that? Did I? I don't. Yes. There's did that one. Do you remember all that? Yes, yes I do that. What, what the, the NDC is saying? saying? The, end, the president said that, and after he did come he to say that he was going to hand over. Died. That Remind is. Me. That's on record, isn't it? He has come back to say he is going to hand over power. There's no doubt in that. You know the number of times I can count on my, at least 
Two where hands. The, the, How many times I've heard Mr. President say, and we will hand over, and I'll be handing over to... At a campaign and, and that rally was to energize his people. While, while I agree that some of the rhetoric coming from the opposition doesn't sound right, and I sat here mm -hmm. on the day of the last demonstration, Enough is Enough, mm -hmm. and criticized what Chairman Esie mm -hmm. has said. Mm -hmm. But when you continue saying things like, and I'll be handing over to my vice. That is why the former president came out and said, it is not up to you to determine Which whom is you hand over to. See, it is the people of Ghana who determine of that. Is this, um, let me call it political talk. For the president to say, oh, I'm not handing over and I'm only going to hand over to my vice president at an MPP political rally is different from the chairman of the NDC making signs of cutting heads. Let's not equate apples and oranges. Let's move on to the other issue. Dr. Marco, let me ask you something. Have you seen war before? Luckily, I've, I've not seen war personally. Lucky for you. But I mean, I've studied war, and that's why I'm saying that. Let's not put ourselves in that situation from both sides. Okay. Let's not put I ourselves you've, in you've, that situation. You've, you've studied war. Shamima, hold for me. You've studied war. Yes, right? I, I mean, it's, it's an interesting topic for me. So I, it's something okay. that I... I've read national security law uh, at the master's level, but that's not even a point of value. I have lived war twice. You don't want war. We don't. So when people like you talk about war, you talk about it from a very detached, romantic position. Because you've never seen it. Yeah, that's you've why never you been, would not hold, hold for me, hold for me, hold for me. You've never been in the thick of things and had to smell rotting bodies. And, and seen we don't people. want to. Good point. You talk about the other side. Mm -hmm. When you go back to your party, mm -hmm. tell them that their rhetoric as well is similar. And some of the things that are happening, your end, their end, are stoking it. I keep saying that when two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. Unfortunately, we are the grass. The commoners in this country. You can call yourself middle class, elite, whatever. When trouble comes, you feel it. So let's prevent it now, then pander to the whims and caprices of these politicians. That is all I'm going to ask. That's why I was asking you whether you had witnessed war before. No, and, and it's not if something you have, anybody wants to I'm sure to some witness. of you and the rhetoric and... It, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so as please I was saying, I don't think there's ever a time where you're going to get that kind of rhetoric from me personally because I don't think that's a solution to any problem. So that's what I'm talking about. And I, I, I mean, I would, I'm welcome to anybody showing me if any high-level member of my party inciting violence on this time... Know? Let's not yeah, let's not. And then let's move on to the second issue about the council briefly, money. Yes, we are, we are pressed for time. Yeah, very briefly. Um, for a, a rep of the NDC, a party that sold one of our major textile producers in the country, to now come and want to take uh, the high road on this matter, I find it, again, very laughable. They don't have the moral rights on this issue to talk about it. So let's, let's get to the crux of it. I guess it's the, on the, record the that... Now. The, it's yeah, on record have that... Moral that right to anything, from, do they? On a lot of issues, yes. Because of this... Mm. Akosombo, the does, right? We owned... Um, Ghana owned Akosombo Textiles. Who sold Akosombo Textiles? So for you to now come... And you, did you... You See, their leader has been president before. John Mahama has been president before. What did he do in, that, in this fight of... Um, Industrialization. His record is there and it's clear what, for everyone What have you done about see. ATL? What have we done about... Eight years. What have you done about Akosombo Textiles? In, so, on our industrialization fight, we tried with... We've made um, inroads with 1D1F. I'm not asking you about your broad industrialization drives, 1D1F. I'm asking you. You mentioned ATL. I didn't mention it. What have you done about ATL? That has been sold. Are we talking about the same Akosombo Textiles company? The same Akosombo Textiles sold? that the chief was talking about in recent times. That what the did the chief should say? Do. You're saying the, the president should revamp it, that it is within a specific constitution that consistently votes for the MPP. Yes, yeah, so it's obviously something, something that it. we will look at. Somehow you we missed can't it take away, eight years. We can't take away the fact of who actually sold it. So a lot has been done, and then there's, there's like a backlog of things to do, and we are going to ad address all these issues. Unfortunately, one after the time, other. we just have about five minutes to go. Benjamin, do you want to take us to your papers? Do you I'll do so very quickly. I'll not get into the, the stories. I'll not read. Um, the ABC News, it says on the side of truth, that's becoming uh, a paucity, something in very short supply in Ghana. Uh, calls for voter register audit hypocritical. NDC must submit evidence of errors. Uh, ABC News, error is spelled E-R-R-O-R. -R -O -R. Um, errors to EC, that's according to the MPP. 6.9% GDP growth in 2024. Quarter two shows economy is recovering. That's according to the finance minister. Saw this story splashed across most newspapers yesterday, um, 
the ABC News is now catching up. And then reject Mahama for insulting chiefs, clergy, and imams. Napo uh, tells Ghanaians. Interesting uh, thoughts on this as well. Um, I heard what the former president said. If he did, if, according to different constituencies, he did, well, I think um, it would be up to him to look into some of his comments. I heard, some, I heard him say something recently with an N-word referring to the president. I felt that was needless, though. But, <clears throat> or at least I read. But when someone like Napo, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, starts talking about, oh, someone is insulting, then I begin to scratch my head and wonder where he just came out of. Because this gentleman, after maybe half an hour of interacting with Otumfo, went and you know, denigrated Nkrumah, and by extension, Otumfo, he insulted Ghanaians by telling us to come up with our own timetables when he was energy minister. And he has continued on that trajectory. Maybe some will say even insulting God by saying that, oh, even God sleeps, he rests at night. So I don't know if we are to stick to principle, whether he has any locus, any, any standing to even talk about insults. But of course, that is the politics of the day. The Ghanaian publisher. 2024 voter register. MPP rejects calls for forensic audit. Agenda 111 to employ 60,000 health uh, personnel. I don't want to go here. It will be an entire conversation. Mm -hmm. YEA Ghana report launch job fair. Major rehabilitation work begins on Accra Kumasi Highway. And Mahama vows to stop buffer stock from supplying SHS food. I guess from the politicians, more and more <laughs> promises. Ad infinitum, ad nauseum. That's where I'll cap it off. I just gave the headlines. I'm good. Let's take a quick reflection, um, Shamima, so that we can circle back into the studio and wrap up. Well, my point briefly and quickly is that when people show you who they are, you believe them. The New Patriotic Party and its assigns and leaders have consistently shown us they, that they intend to subvert the will of the Ghanaians. It started from the president himself who made several comments, severally, that he's not going to hand over to somebody he <clears throat> beat at an election twice. We heard similar comments from their communications director, Miracles Abuaji, tell us that they're going to win this election with strategy. We have heard Napo in Ashanti region, Kumasi, tell us that there are angels, angels will come and vote, and God sleeps at night, so who knows what they'll be doing when God is asleep. We have heard Kennedy at the point tell us before and threatening his own people that if they dare him, he would let Ghanaians know what they did to win uh, previous elections. We have heard, um, heard all of these comments and then we see a register that has unprecedented systemic vulnerability. Sh Shamima, we're out of time. I think, I think the thrust of your point is so made, we are, Shamima. The voices right. are not just NDC voices. The voices are voices of conscience who are rising up to say Alan Chiamanting is not an NDC person. Alan Chiamanting is a member, a former member, family Shabima. member of the New Patriotic Party who right. believes that this party is on to, this government is on the wrong trajectory. Right. And he has also called for mm. an audit. Let us Shabima, do the thank right you. thing to save this country. All right, do the right thing to save this country. Dr. Marco, final words. Okay, so I think we're in interesting times with barely 80 I like the way you sighed before you started talking. Yeah, because a lot has been said. I actually <laughs> wish we had more time to delve deeper into these issues because I'm actually enjoying the conversation <laughs> we're having. So let me try and as much as possible wrap up very, very quickly. Um, the flag bearer of the, the NDC currently, who has been president before in 2016, I think at the launch of their um, national campaign, I don't know if you've seen that video. I will try to say what he said very loosely. He said, when you're in a competition and then you feel that you are losing, it is, what it's usually done is to, as students of politics, yes, let me borrow that word he said, what is done is to vilify the referee and then bring the credibility of the whole action into disrepute. So that's when you lose, you then have something to go on the back of, to go and um, whine. He used the word whining. That is what the ex-president and the leader of the NDC at this point said in 2016 when he was launching his campaign. So, for fast forward in 2024, when we have barely 80 days to election, when it is obvious that the NDC has, has just had the inability to be able to come up with concurrent solutions to our problems, 
because that's what politics is about. We as young people want leaders that will be able to lead us into progress with proper solutions, not just distractions and, 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 and okay. tactics. So, um, because it's obvious that they are, they, are, they are failing at doing that, it's, it's, it's very obvious that they are going back to their, the, the handbook they wrote themselves in 2016, his own words, and now he seems to be... Like to, 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 I don't know who wrote the Ejapadia book, so if you have anything okay, caught now, if you want to bring right, so, him so, yeah. He said it, yeah. his own yeah. words, the, the video exists. And this is where we're so, going to have... That's to. all you are doing now. Uh, Shamima. So Shamima Muslim is communications team member with the NDC. Uh, we're grateful that you joined us, Shamima. And Dr. Ikuya uh, Amwako mm -hmm. also is a communications team member with the yeah. MPP. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for joining the conversation as well. Yes. It's very refreshing having thank both you of you uh, on. Before I go, uh, I walked into the studio this morning and there have been three people from right within asking me about this shirt I am donning. It's courtesy of Mudasiru, Siru Africa. And every Friday, he makes me look good. So if you want something like this, something spectacular, but at a low cost, eh? you can go there and get it at a very good price. You can call that number 0557-029-138. 0557-029-138. Or on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at SIRU-Africa. Check them out and you will not regret it. Sweetie Abochi. Yes, many thanks for your time, ladies. It's been a pleasure hosting you. And we will take a break now. We'll return with sports.